is of a three-week-old child who is a male, three-week-old boy, who presents to you with non-bilious projectile vomiting. Non-bilious projectile vomiting. And when you examine this patient on examination, you palpate an olive-shaped mass in the upper, mid-upper abdomen. Olive-shaped mass on examination. What is the most likely diagnosis? The most likely diagnosis in this case obviously is hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. In hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, there is non-bilious vomiting, vomiting of the food stuff that the child has eaten over the past three weeks, and there is an olive-shaped mass in the epigastrium. It is more common in boys. Boys are more commonly affected than girls, and it is also more common in people whose mothers, whose parents or mothers have been affected by this disorder already or another sibling another sibling already has suffered from this hypertrophic pyloric stenosis so it is common in patients who have family history of this disorder as well and the characteristic clinical uh, the characteristic symptom is non bilious vomiting and the characteristic clinical finding is all in, is an olive shaped mass and the laboratory test which can be performed in this case is an ultrasound of the abdomen an ultrasound of the abdomen will show this olive shaped mass in the distal part of the that is the uh, pylorus of the stomach and a barium swallow a barium swallow can also be performed which will show a narrow pylorus and some of the barium will escape into the duodenum which will show a duodenal cap and a narrow pylorus will appear on the barium studies in the form of a string in the form of a string and that is the reason why this sign is also known as string sign so that is how it is diagnosed it is treated by surgical correction of the of this uh, hypertrophic pyloric stenosis but in addition to that the first thing that you must do in all these cases is maintain the fluid electrolyte balance fluid electrolyte balance is very important in these patients because these children might have been vomiting for a few days so you must 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 maintain their fluid electrolyte balance first before taking these patients for surgery so that is all about hypertrophic pyloric stenosis as a cause of vomiting. Another case could be a three-day-old child, a three-day-old neonate presents to you with bilious vomiting, vomiting that is bile stained, bile stained vomiting, green, greenish colored vomiting. What is the most likely diagnosis in a three-day-old child who presents to you with bile stained vomiting? And when you do an abdominal x-ray, you find a double bubble sign. Double bubble sign. What is the most likely diagnosis in this case? The most likely diagnosis in this case with bilious vomiting and a double bubble sign on the abdominal x-ray is duodenal, duodenal atresia. Duodenal atresia is the most likely diagnosis. In duodenal atresia, what happens is that there is failure of recanalization of the duodenum and due to which the bile that is passed in the duodenum is not being transferred lower down so the, that that bile appears in the vomitus and the vomitus is bile stained which indicates that it is of lower down in the origin the origin is not from the stomach it is from the duodenum an important association of duodenal atresia is that it is associated with down syndrome 20 to 30 percent of the cases of duodenal atresia can be associated with down syndrome so also be wary of that and patients of duodenal atresia who are born to mothers have their mothers have polyhydramnios during pregnancy polyhydramnios 
polyhydramnios is present in the mothers who give birth to children who have duodenal atresia. Polyhydramnios is present in the in the antenatal period, in the prenatal period in the mothers. And the characteristic finding on an abdominal x-ray is the double bubble sign and it is treated by surgical correction. It is treated by surgical correction and also fluid electrolyte balance is also important in these patients. After this, I'm going to have a few words about gastroesophageal reflux in children. Gastroesophageal reflux. Gastroesophageal reflux is a very common phenomenon that occurs in children due to either a lower tone of the lower esophageal sphincter or they might be having a, an associated hiatal hernia or there might be inappropriate lower esophageal sphincter relaxation. So it can occur from multiple variety of causes and it is very common in infants. And these infants usually present to you with spitting, spitting or vomiting of the uh, of their feet spitting or vomiting of their face 20 to 30 minutes after they have taken their feet they present with spitting and vomiting and sometimes they can develop forceful vomiting as well if they, this, these children regurgitate the spit or vomit into their lungs, they can present to you with cough, they can present to you with wheeze, they can present to you with apnea, episodes of apnea. So they can actually aspirate these secretions into the lungs and present to you with cough, wheeze, and apnea as well. So, uh, so in most of these cases, the, disease, the condition is benign and does not have any effect on the child itself and it will resolve spontaneously as the time progresses but in some children it can cause aspiration and that can cause cough wheeze and apnea the definitive diagnosis is may can be made by a pH probe definitive diagnosis is made by a pH probe although this might not be required and usually it is diagnosed clinically what are the general barriers that can be offered to these patients uh, to help these patients with their disease, with the gastroesophageal reflux? You can ask their parents to elevate their head end of the bed, elevate their head end of the bed so they do not regurgitate their food more often. You can ask them to thicken their feeds and not give them very thin feeds, thicken their feeds, make, the, make their feeds more viscous. You can offer them antacids, S2 receptor and Antagonists. Sometimes proton pump inhibitors can also be offered to these patients. Prokinetic agents such as domperidone, which increase the motility, motility of the stomach, can also be offered to these patients, which may help in decreasing the reflux. Majority of these cases will resolve on their own, so it is a pretty benign condition.